than a white kid to a magnet school in Stop 6, the most notorious part of Fort Worth, Texas. And every day I was bused from South Fort Worth to the east side in a policy that they called integration. So I was shipped to where all the stuff went down and I saw firsthand the racial disparities um, and I saw firsthand the issue of race in the classrooms. So you say, well Mark, you seem authentic, you have this background. I want to say to you all that I understand first why I understand is because I understand that the first woman was black. I understand that. That's right. I understand that we all come from a black woman, all of us, no matter what we look like now. So we have Eve, and I know that's a huge responsibility that God has placed on you ladies. Uh, I understand my caution, do, and I, and I know y'all already know this, but I'm here to tell you they are hunting your sons. They are. They're hunting your sons and daughters, but especially your, your black sons literally hunting them in the streets and we saw that with Ahmaud Arbery we saw that with him and what they did there and we're hoping to get that DA out of there I'm working actively to get her out of there so we're gonna get her out but uh, they want your sons to stop running they want your sons to stop breathing they want your sons physic they want the physical manifestations of their bodies why do they want them to put them in the criminal justice system which is focused on mass incarceration so we got to end all that. we got to end systematic racism, at least in our justice system here locally. And they even want your daughters, too, for more sinister purposes. These are not nice people. You all are the gatekeepers to your sons' and daughters' minds, and I urge you to protect their minds with the intensity of a Category 5 hurricane. I want you all teaching them to maintain the peace and to reject unjustified violence. We must reject it in, what, in whatever form. Violence we can only use in self-defense, so I commend everybody for a peaceful protest today and for peacefully protesting all throughout what has happened over the last couple months across the United States. I want you all to protect your kids by teaching them to use their voice, not to use a gun, to use their phones, to post about systematic racial injustice. I want everybody posting and recording. Everybody, record the officers. Every interaction with them should be recorded. And you, the truth is, y'all get the y'all get the recordings out faster than they can get their dash camera stuff out. It's true. So post it, post it, post it. Don't be bashful. Now is not the time to be quiet or docile or or depressed. Now is the time to be energetic. The water is fine, and I want y'all to use your phones as your guns, as your weapons to speak out against tragedies like Breonna Taylor. Say your name, people. Let's not forget her. Yeah. Many people, uh, including people that look like me, they still don't know her name. You know, they, they don't know what the stories are, that, that why they're upset. They don't even process it. So it's important that we get the name out there and continue to preach on these issues that we see keep reoccurring in our society tragically. So y'all surely see with current events how much trust is placed in the queens and the black queens that lead these young men and women. But I know uh, y'all are up to the challenge, and I know uh, y'all are up to the job that God required of you. But I know, too, that y'all are sick of being misunderstood and mischaracterized and, you know, use terms like angry. Oh, it's just another angry black woman. Well, we must reject that notion. No, ma'am. Your black has a purpose, just like my wife's Come black on now. has a purpose. Just Come like on, my Mark. black has a purpose. And I want y'all to shout it literally from the streets. I want yes, yes, yes. yes. I want to clue, conclude with a few thoughts about Breonna Taylor tragedy. Now, I don't have jurisdiction out in Kentucky, obviously. I've only read news reports on the matter. I haven't looked at any evidence in the case. But I can tell you from what I've seen uh, today with the case that uh, it would indeed be a good day for those officers to be arrested. Uh, particularly the one, if I understand there was one that shot blindly uh, into the house. We can't have that. And so what I wanted to announce today formally is that under my administration as DA, in a narcotic, if it's just a narcotics case, we will not use no walk, no knock warrants. I'll dismiss the case if they want to continue this practice. If they want to continue kicking in doors over some little thing of weed or whatever they're worried about and, and concerned about, we're not going to prosecute the case. And that's the only that's the only reason I could think. Um, the only reason I could think that that death happened was because of the use of a no knock warrant. I'm not sure if y'all are familiar, but that basically there's a knock and announce rule under our law. It's been our law, um, and um, what they do is it's a routine practice of signing no-knock warrants. I've seen it done here in narcotics cases. 
Now, I'm saying there's exceptions for every rule, of course. You know, there may be a fugitive situation or something of that nature, but if it's just a plain Jane narcotics case, we don't need to be kicking in people's doors while they're asleep and shooting people. So we're not going to do that anymore. And one of my things is I'm going to go to counsel and I'm going to ask them that they need to limit the use of no-knock uh, with the police entirely, prohibit the use except in the very limited circumstances. And if the police don't do it, guess what? You have a people's DA who's going to put the people first, right? And we're just going to dismiss the case. And it's really that simple. And they'll get the message once we do that a couple times. Um, so that's really what I wanted to say today was I'm listening. I want to be responsive to y'all. You all are an important constituency. I want to know your names. I want to know uh, about tragedies that happen so that we can fix it, that we can take actions. And I want to say that we're not going to put officers first anymore. We're not going to do it. I mean, they serve a function and they're valuable. They're people too. But this whole notion of an officer being better than us has got to stop. So with that said, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Sybil Sloan, she's a great lady. I've heard great things about her. She's got a date. No, she's not here? Thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it. Good night. Thank you.